if you think the scariest hood to be in is parenthood, <laughs> then you're right. But also, there's a way to make parenthood a little less scary. I mean, you get dumped with these kids and you have no manual and they, you know, don't know how to control themselves till later. <laughs> it's very hard. So a lot of people ask me parenting advice and parenting questions and parenting concerns. So I wanted to spend this month talking to you about parenting again. It was a very popular topic last fall. I spent a month talking about parenting. But then I was talking about parenting in general, all ages. Now I want to focus on parenting the adult child, the teen to adult child. And that's in part because of the news and in part because it's been a real thing that no one's talked about for a long time. But I've seen it in here and other therapists, of course, have seen it in their practice. But before we get to the nitty gritty of all that, I'm Dr. Laura Dabney, relationship psychiatrist. I help executive men with their relationship problems. But I've also dedicated my practice to helping people get in the door if they need help. There's a lot of obstacles that people put in the way or see as in the way, and it prevents them from coming in. So I've gotten real creative and uh, to try to get rid of those obstacles. For instance, I do telepsychiatry, teletreatment. I do um, email coaching. I have courses that are online, all kinds of way to get help these days until you're ready. This is another way I get around <laughs> the obstacles you put in place to get help. Talking to you, coming into your space, inviting you into mine to hopefully get you to call one day, 757-340-8800, so we can do this one-on-one. -on -one. Until then, we're talking about parenting. So, and this is not just me as a psychiatrist um, talking to you. I'm also a parent and I really believe that parents help parents because, you know, again, there's no, parenting isn't about a checklist of how to do something right and how to do something wrong. There's no one overseeing it. Um, you know, it's hard to know when you've gone off course and if you're off course and how to get back on course. So, you know, if we help, if parents help each other out, then we're helping our whole community, our whole society. So um, I do have adult kids, FYI, people always ask me. So yes, I can empathize greatly. And I also have been through, you know, a lot of the struggles that you've been through um, with my patients, with my clients and in my own personal life. All right, so let's, you know, it's interesting because poor parenting has recently hit the news, hit the airwaves. I had an article go viral on snowplow, snowplow parenting, which is the latest term. Uh, we've ha heard helicopter parents for a long time. And I actually have another phrase that I've used for a long time before anybody was talking about this stuff. And that is the tractor trailer parent. So <laughs> let's talk about all of those. So what, what, what are the dynamics behind this poor parenting that they, we talked about so much that we've given them these names even. So a lot of people who are afraid they are one of those parents or afraid they're going to become one of those parents. And how I always start any session or any treatment is to say, well, if we understand why that's happening, then we can stop it. <laughs> right? It's a lot easier to understand, to, to see what's going on, to see the patterns and, and say, oh, that's not what I want to do. Right? But if you don't understand the patterns, the dynamics, what's going on underneath, it's a lot less likely you're going to figure out that that's uh, wrong and then where to go that's better. I hate to use the words right and wrong because parenting is um, it's a process. It's a um, give and take and a observe and move forward and come back. So, And we're going to get to that in some of the other um, talks I give further on this month. But today we're going to talk about the dynamics of the controlling parent. <laughs> That's in general the issue here. And I hear this a lot. Well, they're just so they just control freaks. Yes, that's part of it. And part of that is nobody likes to feel out of control. And certainly parents don't like to feel out of control because you fear that's making you a bad parent. Parents are, by definition, in control when their kids are not. So yes, control plays a role in all these different parenting um, issues or problems, but 
it's not just a lot, lock of loss of control that they're fighting when they hover, take control of their child's every move. It's also a, a, a way to avoid pain. A lot of psychopathology is due to trying to avoid pain. If you think about it, the empathy we have with our children is tremendous. <laughs> it's not uncommon to feel, I would rather take the hit than to have my child take the hit because of that empathy. That empathy is there for you to treat. It's biological. It's there so you treat your child. You, you treat the hunger. You treat the, the, the cut. You treat, you know, you reach out and do something. But it can work against you when you're trying to have your child avoid any pain so you don't have to subsequently feel that empathic pain. Right? So helicopter parents and snowplow parents and tractor trailer parents to some degree are trying to get their children to avoid any type of pain so they don't have to feel the pain. The problem with that is you're getting what I call in the weeds. When you're trying to keep control so you don't feel a loss of control, you're trying to ha have no pain happen to your child so you don't feel any pain, you're down in the details of something and you've lost the bigger picture. Bigger picture being we are to get these humans developed in a way that they can go out in the world and into their relationships prepared. Okay, If you're in the weeds and think somehow your uh, badge of honor as a parent or your trophy for being a good parent is because your child never feels any pain or never has to worry about control or, or to think about a plan because someone's in control, you're missing the bigger picture, right? Because how is that child going to deal with pain if you don't teach them how to work through pain? Not to avoid it, right? I mean, obviously, avoiding pain is part of part of life, but we're all going to feel pain. And the sooner you can get your child to feel the pain and work with them through that, and be there for them in their pain. Okay, that's a big difference between smoothing the path for them all the times so they don't feel any pain. Being with someone in pain is, is the definition of an intimate moment, intimate relationship. It's doing a whole lot of good. A lot of parents who do the snowplow, helicopter parenting, devalue simply sitting with a child who's in pain, soothing them, using comforting words or soothing tones or um, talking to them, talking them through that but it's an extremely valuable tool to use and it teaches them how to use it with others right they'll learn how to do that in their relationships if you give that to them the trying to avoid pain, them having any pain isn't um, is losing sight of the bigger picture okay the other thing that parents do the other dynamic behind all this is parents who want to avoid their pain of their child not needing them as much. It's no mistake that these terms, uh, helicopter, snowplow, and the tractor trailer, is around the times where children take that step forward in terms of their autonomy, right? Helicopters around two, three, and in, into elementary school years when a child is going off, making, you know, do it myself. <laughs> they, they, try, they want to, it's biological, they need to, and the hovering starts. Snowplow parents, yeah, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Wow, that's all about independence. That's the child's next big move to independence. And snowplow parents terminology comes up. And then what I've been seeing, you haven't seen in the news yet anyway, is tractor trailer parents are in it for the long haul. When the adult child gets married and has their own family, that's when that all kicks in, right? Another huge um, autonomous move. I've got my own family. <laughs> I, you know, it, it, it's a diss. It's supposed to be, but it feels that way to a lot of parents. I'm, I'm, I'm moving on to my own family. 
and I don't need you anymore. All these big independent stages come with the patholo pathology, the pathological parents who are trying to avoid the grief of the reality that the child has grown up and no longer needs them. Okay, so it's like entering into a fantasy where I still count, they still need me. I'm gonna get into the interview with the older parents, get into the interview, I'm gonna get them, do their college applications, I'm gonna get all that done. It's not so much at that point to have the child avoid pain, that's part of it, but that's when the grief, the child doesn't need me, the child doesn't need me, I don't wanna face that grief that, that they get all in their stuff. With the tractor trailer parent, I call them that because they're, it's, they're in for the long haul. They're never going to dump that load off, right? They're never going to let that child go off into their life and pull back. So when that child is married, right, they're the parents who are doing things like, okay, they contact their kids. We're going to have a meeting. You got to get over here by Saturday, five o'clock. We're going to talk about our next vacation. <laughs> We're talk about how you handled Mother's Day, uh, you know, a month ago. All right. And then these kids, these kids are thirties and forties have their own kids. They're, okay. We got to go over to mom's. We got to have this meeting. Right. The parents are giving the impression that they can't deal with the independence the uh, adult child is getting the sense that, oh my God, if I'm independent, oh my gosh, they're, they're just not gonna be able to handle it. It's all unconscious. It's all going on under the surface. But I have people calling me, it is not unusual. Where I have third people in, their, people in their 30s and 40s who have anxiety, depression, or relationship problems. And the underlying problem is they got their foot in both camps. They have their foot in their family of origin and they have a foot in their in their relationship, in their family. They can't do both. They can't do both and be happy. <laughs> they can't do both well. And we have to have this whole talk about the tractor trailer parent and letting go. Because if the parents aren't gonna do it, then the child, that child of course, is old enough to do it themselves, right? So this is the dynamic behind it. They're, they're, they don't want to, they're avoiding their own pain out of empathy. They're avoiding a loss of control, which just feels bad and makes people anxious and they're avoiding the grief that the child has moved on and can move on. What I teach my parents in that situation, I teach my adult children to move on despite that anxiety the parent can't handle it because in every single situation the parent can handle it and they then move beyond that bump to what the next phase is which I tell my parents about which is the beautiful friend reunion that comes back up once you let go. Okay, so the parent, the snowplow, the helicopter, the tractor trailer parent, if they let go, realize they can handle the pain, the loss of control, the grief, and live through that, which they will. It's not fun, but live through it. What happens is that child uh, has been independent, you are now separated, and you can come back to the picture of a friend-to-friend -friend relationship. You would never tell your friends, okay, three of you, gotta be over here at five o'clock so we can talk about our next get together. You wouldn't order around or expect them to listen to your every command. You know, you wouldn't go into a friend's interview, no matter how much you thought you could help by being in the interview or doing their applications, you wouldn't, ever do that with a friend and that's a, a, a little gauge you can use to realize if you're if you've lost your way you wouldn't do that because it's invasive and that sets you up for a problem well it's the same with your adult child it is invasive they might, may not be telling you they may not even be conscious of it but that resentment that you're invading their space and treating them like a slave you've got to be here when I say you got, you, got, you got to handle things the way I say, the way I do. You, you, I, I can't be left out of any of your big decisions. You can't make any big decisions without me. It would ruin any friendship. And it's going to ruin your relationship with your child. These parents forget that a child, an adult child, can leave. I mean, leave for good. I mean, leave and never, ever talk to you again. It happens. 
you kid yourself that you think it's a huge risk you're taking by not feeling, not allowing this separation to happen, not going through these feelings, because your child can and might leave and not deal with you at all. Or worse, deal with you, but be gritting their teeth and hating every moment of it. Is that really the type of relationship you want to have? So those are the dynamics behind the over-controlling, hovering, over-invasive parent. Right? We parents do that to avoid pain, loss of control, and, and um, bereavement, grief. But it, you, you don't have to avoid those things. And you really can't as a parent. Okay, You have to face the fact that those are things to go through. Help your child, help yourself, ha help your um, partner, your spouse go through those things is so much more valuable. Tell your child, your adult child, I'm anxious about you getting a job. Can we talk through it? Right? So much more. Wouldn't you rather have your adult child go off to their spouse and say, hey, I'm kind of anxious about this interview we have tomorrow. Can we talk about it? Or would you want your child to show up at your at her his spouse's interview and say, I'm, I'm going to do this for you. I got it. Right? You have to think in those terms. They're not little children anymore. Even though you treat them that way, it's not the case. Okay. So any questions on that, of course, as always, give me a call, 757-340-8800. Shoot us an email, dabneyoffice at gmail.com. Until next Tuesday, see you then.